you were going blind and marijuana could help your condition, would you use it? The man suffers from glaucoma and says marijuana is the only medication that will save his sight. Going blind is a very scary proposition. But when the feds found out, they had him thrown in jail. I'm going blind. I got to leave the country. When I came here, I used to brag on the Dutch. You know, I thought tolerance, liberal, this is marijuana land. And now I kind of stick my head in the sand. I'm kind of embarrassed about being here. Clark French was 24 years old when he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2010. Desperation led Clark to a medicine that finally worked, cannabis. They're trying to tell me that when I'm in pain and I consume cannabis and it goes away, they're trying to tell me I'm lying. We lose people. I've lost my friends. And I know so many people that have lost family members and loved ones. And just think what their lives could have been if they had legal access, if all adults had legal access to cannabis. Okay, welcome to our third debate about how we're going to regulate internationally cannabis. I want to introduce to you Mr. Clark French from England. We have here Mr. Roberto Faverca from the Czech Republic, I have to say. Mr. Well, <laughs> James, well, you're from Holland or you're from America? <laughs> At the moment, <laughs> like I say, I'm embarrassed. Of okay, okay. Misha oh, Knott wow. from Germany. And Mr. Sean, Sean, Sean Carney, Carney from Tilroy. Um, basically, we have an international uh, um, um, panel. Um, starting with you, Clark. I have seen your emotional speech just now. Yeah. How are things developing in Britain? Well, it's difficult in Britain. We've got a conservative government which doesn't particularly want to listen to us. Um, so it has been very, very difficult to get any form of change, any form of um, interest from, from the government. However, we have been really successful in getting people and other MPs from other parliamentary groups involved and really spreading awareness. So we're, we're getting there. We're, we've definitely made progress in the last few years. Uh, the United Patients Alliance has been involved with the, the uh, APPG, which is the all-party parliamentary group, which is a group of 100 MPs and peers. And they had, uh, did a report recently which concluded that medical cannabis should be uh, legally available to all patients uh, and that paper, people should be able to grow as well. So it, uh, we're, we're making progress, but we still are having problems with the, with the government itself listening and wanting to change. Uh, our Prime Minister, Theresa May, she has some um, religious moral issues. To her, people who consume drugs are bad, therefore cannabis is bad, therefore it must not have any medicinal benefits. So it's been it's a bit of a brick wall, to be honest okay. with you, with her. Um, however, other Conservative members have, uh, party members have agreed with us. So. You know, it's in the balance, it's, it's slowly but surely happening. There's a lot more public awareness around medical cannabis. I think the internet has definitely changed that. Yeah. Um, there's a huge awareness now. Generally, when we do events, people know what that cannabis is medicine. So we're slowly but surely getting there, but we still have got a long, long way to go. So okay. unfortunately, we don't have, I don't have legal, I'm a, I'm a patient, and most of the people in the United Patients Alliance are also patients. None of us have legal access to medical cannabis yet, but we carry on campaigning until we do. So, and until we do, yeah. And Robert, it's something different in Czech Republic. I mean, then it seems like Wahala in comparison with, uh, with Clark. Can you explain how the situation is there? Czech Republic is a little bit different situation. We have basically, although based on full prohibition of cultivating or Processing cannabis for personal use, we have legalized medicinal cannabis uh, four years ago. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it has two different aspects. Of course, it's good to see that it's legally cannabis seen as a medicine. So, of course, it changed dramatically uh, public opinion about cannabis. They don't see it only as a drug, but also as a something which can really help them, all, uh, because they can find a lot of information on internet. The thing is, uh, what's going on with uh, legal medicinal cannabis, it's like that it's really hard actually in now, in this moment, it's not available. 
because the legislation was done really not properly, basically uh, only importing cannabis uh, was allowed in the first stage, which was uh, done together with Holland, with Bedrocan. Actually, in second stage, they got a local grower and distributor of medicinal cannabis, but they didn't have enough uh, you know, legal uh, mm. like, uh, studies and proof, so actually they ended. And in this moment, in four, four years later, although it's legal, it's not available widely. And even then, when cannabis was sold and was available in the pharmacies, it cost like three times as much as on the black market, which would, wouldn't attract people to actually go for it. And the situation, the, the administration to obtain the prescription was really difficult for people. And if they see it, they can grow a couple of plants basically for free for themselves. A lot of people prefer this. Yeah. So that's the situation. And when it comes to changing to this point of view and actually change the prohibition that it should be allowed for every adult person to grow a couple of plants for his, uh, for his use. We run together with Pirate Party. We are closely involved in, uh, we run a petition now and we have proposal uh, like on a changes of law, how to really could be happen that everybody could grow a couple of plants for himself. And we have elections in October, which we believe that we can promote that idea of legalizing and uh, get other parties involved because they see it as an important uh, political topic and that's what I see the important part in changes that the political parties got interested because the public is interested in changes. Okay, okay. and James, uh, talking about what, what uh, um, just been said about the, the, the start of you know, the medicinal cannabis and only a sole player, big player, Pedro Khan, you know what is the, you've seen the beginning of the Dutch medicinal program. What is the biggest mistake that they've made here? I think several. One, I think the biggest one they've made is gamma raying it, which is basically nuking it. And that kills some of the turpins. And if you notice the product, when you open the canisters, you don't smell anything. And that's because most of the turpins and other have been killed through the gamma rain. The other problem was that the government here doesn't promote it. It was, put, it was put out there, but there was no basic information. There's no drug salesman, any other drug company. They go around and sell it to the doctors and inform the nurses and, and do trials. That's not happening here. Also, research here is, is at a standstill. And the real problem is, is I came from America to here because this was marijuana land and medical marijuana land, and now it's just the opposite. It's going better in America than it is here. And the real problem that the Dutch are going to have, and they're going to find this out in the next couple of years, is if they've taken a lot of the Dutch products, a lot of the Dutch seeds, a lot of the Dutch methods, and they patent them in America. And so now if you want to, the Dutch people want to use those seeds, you're going to have to pay the U.S. company a royalty. And we, f we fell farther and farther behind. The rest of the world is going this way. We're going this way. And for me, it, it, it's deja vu. I could end up going to prison again. I, I've done twice in America. Go to prison here in Holland for growing five plants of marijuana. I mean, it's coming. They're flying drones in Friesland and Maastricht. They're confiscating property. I mean, it sounds like America. And so it's a little bit scary, I understand, for people. And in Friesland, they come and take one or two plants that a guy had in his garden. He was using it for a tropical plant for a little, he had some other plants, you know. I mean, that's how bizarre it has become in Holland. I, I still stunned. I cannot believe it because I came here in the 80s and it was marijuana land. We were, there was research. There was four companies I was working with. I ran the Institute of Medical Marijuana. I was the first one to grow for the pharmacies. At that time, there was three pharmaceutical companies that I was working with. Nothing's happening now. Okay. So for me, I, it's been a big disappointment. And I'm scared for the future because it doesn't look so bright. OK. Misha. I think you're too late, yeah. Misha, we have, uh, we, with Germany now, uh, we just had a short or a, a hunger strike of Dr. Gortenhermen because he said the prices have doubled since Germany introduced the medicinal system. What can you say about this and how is he? Um, I'm a patient myself and I experienced it myself in the pharmacy. Uh, so far we implemented a law for medical cannabis in March 
Before that law, it was already possible to uh, receive or obtain medical cannabis in the pharmacy via you, ha you had to get a certain permission from the state. You were double checked by a state's doctor and then you are by the state's agency <coughs> and uh, by the doctors of them. And then you had a, ex a permission to receive medical cannabis from the pharmacy, either from Netherlands or uh, since 2016. Uh, we could also receive medical cannabis from uh, Canada. Um, our government implemented a law that it's not only exceptional medicine, but it's a normal medicine since March this year. Cannabis is considered as a normal medicine uh, with, a certain with a certain special regulations. And uh, now I can go to my doctor. I, I tried to go to my doctor and get a prescription, which was not, it was easy because I was already a, a a patient before I had I had all the documents, but uh, the price it didn't double. But it's uh, it used to be 15 grams for the same bedrocan uh, in in Netherlands. It's uh, you pay uh, six or seven in a pharmacy, yeah, and now it's 23 euro for a gram at the moment. Aye, aye, aye. Okay. So, but uh, we're also Sorry. talking in Germany. We're also talking about reimbursement, and uh, we are as a patient group. Uh, we already sued, I already sued my insurance and a lot of patients meanwhile within the last uh, 10 weeks sued their insurances and we are winning one case after the other. So if they make it so expensive they have to reimburse us because uh, we can prove that we cannot pay for it. Of course because my therapy would be 2034 euros a month. For the same, uh, the same therapy in Netherlands you pay 500 euro a month for the same cannabis in the same pharmacy. And it's not due to the producers. It's due to the pharmacies who double the price because they say it's not a ready-made medicine and they grind it. You can't believe it? They grind it and that's what they charge eight euro per gram for. Jeez. For grinding it or just for checking it. They just open the box. It's the box like this. It's a Canadian medical. They just open the box, smell, close it, eight euro per gram. So, mm -hmm. it, talking about the Canadian, uh, talking about America, Sean, Tilroy is, is, uh, is, is, is growing, is, 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 is sort of well, conquering the world is maybe something too big to say, but it's, it's, it's getting in there in, in this industry, very professional, unbelievably uh, slick and really well done. Um, how, do you think the situation in Europe is therefore for you more profitable than it otherwise should have been if they regulated another way here? Well, e Europe is, like uh, Mr. Burton said, it's really fallen behind, like culturally, in a huge way compared to North America. And the Americans started the whole problem, uh, but they're, they're actually solving, and the Canadians too, in a yeah, certain way. Yeah. Uh, but in, in Canada, it's only thanks to the... Uh, uh, citizens uh, taking uh, taking on the state in court, just like in, uh, in in the German case. It's the only reason it happened in Germany is because there was a multiple sclerosis patient who, for 17 years, I think, or so, about, was fighting in 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 the court. And, and once that uh, broke, and then the high court made the ruling, uh, then it, it kind of opened the floodgates. So, in some ways, Europe's behind. But here, the good thing is that. The, uh, like the medical marijuana kind of California thing. I'm originally from California. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of, a, it's kind of a, a hoax. I mean, some people use it for, for leg legitimate medical purposes, and that's great. But a lot of people don't, you know, like once the California law uh, took effect, then the number of uh, uh, like young men between the ages of 18 and, and 35 with back pain surge. So it was, it was, it was, it was a joke, in, in, in but in the, Europe it's different. It's a lot more medical. So there is an opportunity here to take cannabis and, and really use it in, in the most effective way. And do you also support then the, the, the strict division, division between the medical use and recreational use? Well, yeah, there, I mean, in, in Europe it's pretty clearly separate, or that's what they're, they're going for, which is I think a good idea so that you're not mixing, mi mixing arguments. In California, it's, it's, it's just one big jumbo, and it, and, it, and it confuses the issue, and then nobody knows if you're, if you're speaking to the issue or if you're kind of, you know, uh, trying to make some secret argument. Uh, so it's really good just to do, have the medical, but then uh, what the Europeans need to do is stop being so tolerant about cannabis. That was great for 20 years, 
but now it doesn't work. Now that's the reason why it doesn't work in the Czech Republic, because the Czechs are like super tolerant, uh, but so much that no one does anything. And so nothing happens. So people who could be farming or having a shop or, or be doing extracts or, or making something or doing PR for a company, right? All legitimate stuff which is happening in Canada and uh, in, in the US. And it's not happening here because there's too much tolerance. So about this, you have to stop being having tolerance for cannabis is an illegal thing and it, it has to be just a legal a plan period i saw you i saw you misha because i know you also find a division between medicinal and rec recreational something very very important no um i think uh, in german we we say it's a uh, you can draw a certain line but you cannot always draw it a, a, a certain line because cannabis was illegal for uh, 50 years, for 60 years now. So any medic, medical user was a criminal until two or three or five or six years ago. So uh, everybody who used cannabis as a medicine had this, uh, uh, has this experience to be a criminal consumer and the people are still living today. So um, every, and a lot of people even didn't know that they use cannabis for, for medical reasons before they, tried to, before they tried out to smoke illegal weed. So the, uh, the illegal weed led them to their medicine. So I think it's very hard and we also could lose a lot of credibility if we draw the line too hard. Of course there has to be a line in my eyes because there's, of course there's a, a difference between recreational and medi med medical use. But if we draw the line too hard, we, we, we will have Californian, uh, we will have a Californian, uh, Californization as we say. That I always ask in, in Germany, in South Germany for example, we have a very high uh, grade of repression. So I always ask the people, okay, if you're not legalized in South Germany, what do you think, what, what will people do? Will they, will they go to the doctor and lie as hell, or will they go to jail? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, what do yeah, they yeah. prefer? Yeah. So, okay. And we, we don't want uh, people to go to the doctor and lie. That's, they have to be honest about their cannabis consumption, and that's only possible if both is legal. Okay. I'd just like to put one perspective in <coughs> about the financial. He was saying 23 euros a gram. I grew for the Dutch government and I was documented to growing marijuana at 56 cents a gram is what it cost. I sold it to the Dutch government for eight years for two and a half euros a gram and I made money. So I just want to put the perspective in it cost 56 cents a gram to grow. Okay, and Robert, and reacting on what, what, what Sean said about, you know, it's not happening because of the tolerance. What can you say about that? Hmm. About no, not happening, yeah. There is this, in, from my opinion, you know, the cannabis should be widely available for everybody in the first place. There shouldn't be any restriction on personal use. Distinguishing medicinal and recreational, it should not happen in my opinion. It should be just a weed because then the legislation which was happening in Czech Republic, they were actually saying this is legal cannabis which we grow in a special facilities and it, it will cost a lot of money and you have a lot of money invest and it would be hard to get a license to grow it and next to it is that illegal plant which you're not allowed to grow for personal use. So there was so much of hypocrisy in, in the beginning and basically turning part of the black market white you know, and making some of dodgy legislation which end up like the, the state became a, the major dealer, you know, and they were abusing the need of patients and seniors who would like to get it planned as, you know, as easy as possible. The, the, the uh, legislation or uh, regulatory on medicinal cannabis is harder than on morphine-based uh, medicine, for example, you know, so it's really difficult to get it. And we found that basically the biggest activists in Czech Republic are patients now because they grow it, they don't care what's going to happen with them. And we support them as an NGO I run. We give seeds for free to everybody. It's called Seeds for Seniors. And we basically spread seeds. We like distribute to thousands of people every year. Seeds we get from seed banks and growers and, you know, and all kinds of sources. And people are not afraid to grow it. And we have lawyers, and in the case they get into troubles, you know, we can help them out. And we just fight the system, and basically we say, look, that's the alternative, that's the way you should do it. You should take in the patients, because they have a lot of experiences on how to grow, what to do, what plans work for what. You know, we have legislation, you can obtain only one kind, one type of cannabis, 
from bedrock on, you know, with a high percentage of THC and nothing else, mm -hmm. basically, you know, and have thousands of different, uh, different types, sorts of cannabis you can use. Yeah. So it's not happening, but it, it is happening because when, we, when you start to talk about the medicinal cannabis, it's based on the recreational use which was the only way how to protect through the years of prohibition actually the cannabis as a life plan which can do and have beneficial properties you know and basically yeah maybe users are patients you know in the same time so you cannot really make this difference because if you make it then you just support the business which is made on patients in my opinion and it should be distributed for free no money no money involved in it you know at least for those who are really in need it shouldn't be matter of, it shouldn't be cost it shouldn't cost anything at all okay, okay. now clark because you you you've been fighting obviously in, in in britain but how does this go further than that i mean how can you unite europe i mean we're in all different countries here we basically all have the same problem more or less. I mean, every country does it in a similar way or different, just a diff bit different than all. So what's happening on this, you, in this area? You've asked unite. the British person how to unite Europe. Like, <laughs> we, I think we're leaving, aren't we? Uh, Sorry about that. No, 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 but, no, but, no but from Patients Alliance. But, uh, you know, I, talking about Patients Alliance, talking about people, connecting people, that's more... I think, I, mean. I think one of the main things that we found in the UK is Bringing, bringing activists together and bringing patients together who have various conditions who find that cannabis helps them. That has been incredibly powerful. Um, I think that we all learn a lot from each other. From, uh, we can all learn a lot from talking to each other about cannabis, about how we all consume cannabis, what it does for each and every one of us. And I think that where you draw the line between what is recreational and what is medicinal cannabis consumption is very, very, very blurry. And yes, you have to do it in a pharmaceutical sense in terms of getting the right dosage of medicine to the right person at the right time, of course. But at the same time, you know, I, I have MS and um, cannabis helps me, it is medicinal for me, but I also enjoy it. I'm also a recreational consumer, so I would be lying. I would be lying if I said I didn't enjoy yeah. cannabis. So yeah. I think what we can do together is talk about it more, is talk to people about it, talk to your representatives about it, talk to your local news about it, talk to everyone that you can about it. Like um, I think that is what the grassroots movement, there's a really big surge, but we need to carry on and we need to carry on getting that, that medicine to people. If it means that maybe if you're growing your own, you have to do a couple of extra plants to help someone else that is, that is in need and maybe has cancer and can't grow themselves. Or, you know, or maybe it's just linking someone up with someone who, you know, maybe there's an activist group who someone one might get on really well with and they might, they might help each other. We really need to break these boundaries and really uh, work together to ensure that every person has legal access to cannabis. I think that's incredibly important. All right. And Sean, um, because I think there are also sort of two maybe or maybe other ways, but there's one thing about big companies like Tilroy also making sure that politics and so on, the, the talking to them and making sure some kind of legalization, regulation, whatever is going to happen. What is the importance of also the big industry to be there? Well, like there's uh, there's a knee-jerk reaction initially as this kind of industry is starting to actually mature uh, that uh, when there's a company that's successful and they have lawyers and, uh, and accountants and they're running a normal business then people say oh they're the bad guys they're 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 trying to milk it or, or something like this uh, but it's really important because then you can win over the trust of, of, of the general public, of politicians, of, of local politici politicians, which is really important because all this stuff has to be approved on a, on a local level, uh, and, and bankers and everything. And then it, and it, it, it takes away the stigma, and then you, the whole thing becomes just a normal, a normal business, which is one of the things I wanted to touch on what has been mentioned is about the, the pricing issue. And, and that there's like no selection and, and the equality is, is questionable. Th this is all directly because there's no competition in Europe. Europe is this terrible Amen. monopoly concept, which has, in, in Italy they have the army growing. Here there's one company legally growing. In Germany maybe they'll have two or three growers, you know, we don't know. 
But uh, competition in Canada, it's pushing prices down. It's creating innovation. Improved quality. Uh, quality is a lot better. It's competition. Yeah, competition is great. But it's because people don't tolerate just, okay, we'll have tolerance for this. No, it's a yeah. normal business. It needs competition and professionalism. And you have a cash flow. When Colorado starts exactly. to see these millions flow in, you change politicians' mind. And that's what we need here, some cash flow. If you could generate a billion dollars the next year, everybody would start listening real close. Okay. I'm so sorry the time is up for this international. We could have talked for much, much longer. Yeah. Thank you very much. Clark, Roberto, James, Misha, and Sean. Thank you very much. Thank you.